When you are going to copy and paste content from one document to another, or even from one layer to another, um, you have to decide how you want the, the pasted content or the duplicated content to interact with what is already on your page. And do you want it to have a hard edge or do you want it to have a soft edge? And by default, if you just copy and paste something, it has a hard edge. And so you should consider um, that if, if in some cases you're trying to create maybe a collage where the images blend together in some way, you may want to have a feathered edge or a softer edge to your project. And so one of the ways to do this is to make the selection of whatever you would like to copy and paste, or sometimes you're just selecting what you want to get rid of and you're going to hit the delete key. Um, you can choose after you make that selection or even before you make that selection that there should be some sort of soft edge to it called a feather. And if you uh, create a selection first and then go to the select menu, modify, and feather, you can feather the edge of your selection so that whatever it sits on top of, um, it'll try to blend itself into that. Now, if you had something that was bright red feathering into something that's bright green, it's not going to feather completely, um, but it would soften the edge. If you're proactive, you can do this before you even make your selection. So if you make a selection using a selection tool, uh, across the top of your screen, you'll see that there's different options for your selection, and one of them is feather. And so you can choose to feather five or 10 or 3,000 pixels. I wouldn't recommend that. Um, so as you're making the selection, you don't have to do anything else. Photoshop already knows you want a feather edge to it. And so I want to show you how to combine images uh, to make a collage by feathering the edge uh, so that the images kind of fade into one another. I pulled these sample images off of our stock imagery. And uh, I'm going to pretend that I just went on vacation and I wanted to create a little collage of the pictures that I took when I was on vacation. And in order to do that, um, I am going to, to merge these documents into one. And I don't, I'm not a fan of picking, like, let's say this document and saying I'm going to bring all of the other files into it. I like to keep this file as is and I'll create a new document, file new. And maybe I'm trying to make a print that's 7 inches by 5 inches at 300. And now when I bring the artwork into here, I'll know how it fits in relationship to my output size. It's always good practice though to choose image and image size and to change your resolution to 300 before you do that. And you can see that this image is actually really small and so I couldn't use it on the entire 5 by 7 inch collage or postcard, whatever I'm making, but I could use it in part of it. And so I'm just going to go through and choose image and image size on all of these images just so when they come over into the new document, they're already going to be the size that they should be for my output. And remember, I know I've said this 85,000 times, never, ever, ever choose that resample checkbox unless you're doing so purposefully because it will make up pixels. It will change the number of pixels in your image and you don't want to do that. So now we can copy and paste. So I could do Command A to select all, Command C to copy, and then go to the document and do Command V to paste. Or what I'm going to do is instead of selecting the entire thing, I am going to use whatever selection tool I like best, and the same applies to you. And I'm just going to select the part of the image that I want to bring over. And so maybe I want to bring this part of the image here. And I'm going to select it and choose Command or Control C and then come to my new document and paste it. I'm not going to worry about where it's at just yet. I can do the same thing here. Uh, this one, I think I'm going to grab the whole thing, so Command or Control A, Command or Control C, and then paste it. Same goes with this one, maybe. So we'll do Command A to select all, Command C, then Command V. Uh, I think the same goes for this one, so we'll copy that, paste it, and then this one, I think I want the whole one on this one too. And so we'll copy that and we'll paste it. Now that I've moved it over to my new document, you can go ahead and close out of all these other documents because you don't need them. Because you don't need them. And now we can work on creating our collage so you can move the pictures around. Um, this one here, I kind of thought it would be cool to have the the bricks kind of pan out in a circle from the corner. So maybe I want to select it and choose edit and then free transform and rotate it so that if I nudge it into the corner, it'll appear like the bricks are coming out. Um, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. I know that's not best practice, but it is what it is for this activity. 
And then you can kind of move these pictures around until they are filling up the area that you are trying to, to fill. Now I don't have enough um, artwork for this area and so what I may end up doing is getting another image um, or maybe I'll reposition these so that this one's up here. You put the bikes in the middle. You can do whatever you need to do to make sure that you fill up the artwork area. And so since I am one short, I am going to, I downloaded an extra image that I didn't think I was going to use, but I'll go ahead and grab that one too, copy it, and then paste it in place. And so now I kind of have the layout that I'm going to do for my collage. Um, but in order for it to work, I need to kind of blend them into one another. And so the first one that I am going to do is going to be, let's say, the ice cream. And so with the ice cream uh, document selected, uh, you can feather the edge of your selection or your of your image by making a selection and then cutting the part away that you don't want. And so if I wanted to keep, let's say, the ice cream cone, maybe I would create a pattern that I'm going to use for my collage. Um, I have the selection. If you choose select and then modify feather, you can choose to feather your selection. Let's go with 10 pixels on this one because it'll be big and obvious. And then it doesn't look like anything happened, but if I select, let's turn this off here. If I select everything but the ice cream cone, so I have the ice cream cone selected, if you choose select an inverse, now you have the background selected and you choose delete, it will delete what you have selected, which was the outside, but see how it has a soft edge to it? And so you can use that to feather the images together. And you can then repeat that for all the other images in your document. So you can turn these guys back on. And so maybe I want to feather this image of the vines into the image of the ships. And so I first have to figure out what layer that is. In my case, it's layer three. You can make a selection. It doesn't have to be a free form selection like I just did, but maybe that's what we're going to do for all of them. And so I can come through and I can make a selection of, of the, I don't know, the vines image. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing that I just did. So I have the part that I want to keep selected, if you choose select and then modify feather, you can feather. I'll do 10 pixels again just to be consistent. And then you need to select the part you want to get rid of. And so we'll do select inverse and then hit the delete key. And now it has a soft edge to it. So if you turn the other layers back on, you'll see that you are starting to blend the images together. And so if I move the, the ship's image up, you'll see that it has a soft edge and it's blending into the image of the ships. Now, maybe I do edit free transform on the ship image. Why would it not let me do that? Edit free transform. So the prompt that I was getting said that I couldn't do that because the selected area was empty. Um, I either had the old selection that I was using for that Vines image selected or Photoshop thought I still had it selected. And so I deselected. I did Command or Control D and then I was able to choose Free Transform. And then now maybe we can make that ship image bigger to use in our project down here. And then you can go through, like, I don't think that I need to feather the edge of the ship image because I'm already feathering the other images into it. Maybe we can move the, the bikes over and do the same thing. So you can just repeat that. Um, you could even, so I'm about to do that same selection method, but this time, instead of making the selection and then telling Photoshop to feather it, I can, at the top of your screen here, when you have any selection tool selected, I have the lasso tool, you can change the feather to 10. And so now as you make your selection, it doesn't matter. Um, it automatically feathered the edge of that selection. Just like everything else though, I have what I want to keep selected and I want to get rid of the background and so I should do select inverse and then use the delete key. Oh, I'm still, I'm still up here in the feather box and that's why it wouldn't let me do that. And so we can use select, I already did inverse and now we can hit the delete key and it will delete 
the area that's selected, which happened to be the background, and then you can turn your layers back on, and then you can repeat this over and over again until the images blend together. Now your layers panel comes into play here. If I deselect Command or Control D, and we take a look at the left hand side of the bikes, you can see there's a hard edge that I missed. I could fix that, or I could move the vine image above the image of the bicycles, because I know I feathered the edge of that, and I could move it over. I don't quite like that as much, and so I would probably move it below the bikes again. And then I would just repeat myself. Maybe this time I just select the area that I want to get rid of. Uh, my feather is already at 10 because it remembers that. And then as long as you're on the layer that has the bicycles, you can use the delete key and it will delete and it will feather the edge of your selection. And so you can repeat that for all of the other uh, objects. Now, I could do that for, let's move the stones to the top of the panel here. I could do that for my stones too. So I could come through here and I could use my elliptical marquee tool to create the arc of what I want. Maybe it's like this. And then choose select feather. I'm sorry, select modify and then feather. 10 pixels. We'll select the inverse and then hit the delete key. And you could feather it that way. In this case, I don't like the end here, and so maybe I'll come back and choose Edit Free Transform and just make it bigger and then move it around. Um, and for the, for the bricks, though, it might look better if it had more of a feather to it. And so if we go back and we choose Step Backwards until our bricks are done, uh, what we could do is instead of feathering at 10 pixels, maybe we select Modify and we feather... I don't know, let's do 30 pixels, see how crazy that looks. And when we hit the delete key, can you see that now there's more feather to where the bricks overlap? Let's do it again. Let's do one more. Let's do select modify feather. Let's do, I don't know, 100 pixels. And now when you delete, can you see how the, the transition between the, the bricks image and let, just look at the, the green image up here that has the flowers on it, how it fades um, a lot more subtlety, more subtly. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that for this demo. Uh, in the next video, I am going to talk about how you can use a brush to paint the content from one file to another. And so as you're painting, you can add texture, like a painted texture to it, or you could add transparency.